Today, we're talking about the difference between digital and analog audio connections. If you've ever looked at a bunch of audio cables and thought, what is even going on here? You're in the right place. We're gonna keep this light, but by the end, you should know which audio cables you actually need and which ones you can stop stressing about. So let's start with the basics. The job of a cable, whether it's analog or digital, is to carry audio signals from point A to point B. Whether it's from your soundboard to your speakers or from a podcast mic to a computer. Analog and digital cables just do it in different ways. First, there's analog connections. This includes cables like XLR, quarter inch, RCA, or even your basic headphone cable. Analog cables carry a continuous electrical signal. The voltage of that electrical signal essentially fluctuates in correlation with the audio signal it's carrying. But there's a catch. Analog signals can lose strength over distance and become vulnerable to electrical interference the longer they run. Have you ever plugged something in and heard a super annoying buzz or humming sound? Well, that's an analog signal picking up noise from the environment, like other power cables laying around them. Some analog cables are better at avoiding or canceling out this interference than others, depending on whether they're balanced or unbalanced cables. Unbalanced cables, like RCA and your headphone cable, are simple, but they're more prone to interference, making them only good for shorter runs. Balanced cables, like XLR, have an extra signal wire in them that helps cancel out noise, which is why you'll find them in more professional environments like stages or studios that need longer cable runs. So here's a real hot tip. If you ever happen to get in a situation where you hear that extra noise or annoying humming, you can easily get rid of it using this handy little device. This audio hum eliminator can help you eliminate extra noise in live environments. Now it's not 100% foolproof, but it can really help you in a pinch. Now let's talk about digital. Examples of digital cables are optical, coax digital, or simply a USB connection. And they don't carry an electrical signal. Instead, they carry digital signals in a series of bits, ones and zeros. Because digital is just data being transferred, the sound doesn't fade or get noisy over distance. As long as you're within that cable's max length, it's crystal clear. But if something goes wrong with a digital cable, instead of a humming noise, you'll hear dropouts, glitches, or maybe nothing at all. And of course, you can convert digital signals to analog and analog signals to digital. Using something like this Focusrite USB audio interface, you can connect your analog audio to a computer. And conversely, you can also convert your digital signals to analog using a DAC, or digital to analog converter. So how does this show up in real life? Plugging your phone into your car with an aux cord, that's analog, unbalanced. But plugging it into your USB port, that's digital. Connecting your TV to a sound bar with an optical cable, that's digital. Running a microphone into your audio mixer, that's usually analog, XLR, and balanced. Both types are everywhere, and you're probably using analog and digital every day without realizing it. And in the world of live audio these days, it's most common to have a mix of analog and digital connections throughout the chain. So that's it for today, analog versus digital audio, unpacked in a way that hopefully makes sense to you. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and happy streaming.